trying to communicate in as few words as possible about exactly why you're reaching out is like the thing to do, like really precise, like as few words as possible, really precise about why you're reaching out, what problem you solve and how you're uniquely capable of solving it. That's all you need to do. And if we have that problem and we can't solve it and we need help solving it, I'm going to respond to you. What's up, agency owners? Jason Swank here with another episode of the Smart Agency Masterclass. And today I'm actually getting back to my roots. I originally started this podcast interviewing people that were like CMOs and business owners that were making decisions of why they chose agencies. What are agencies actually doing wrong? And I haven't done it in probably eight years. Well, today changes that. I have a great guest on Kelly, and he's going to talk about really good strategies that he's seen or not seen or things you need to avoid when reaching out to big brands that you actually want to work with and go over a lot of uh, the things. And he's even owned an agency. So let's go ahead and jump into the show. Hey, Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I'm excited. Uh, like I said in kind of the, the introduction, you know, I'm kind of getting back to my roots. I have not interviewed brands of why they picked agencies or why they avoid agencies in a long time. So thanks for coming on. Tell us who you are and what is your brand? Yeah, my name is Kelly Thornton, and I'm a founder and CEO of Tej Hanley, and we're in Chicago, Illinois. Um, our whole mission is to help men look and feel amazing. And we do it by selling simplified skincare systems to men. So that's what we do every day. I get up, put my foot feet in the ground and think about how I can help guys like with their skincare routine. There you go. That's awesome. That's a, that's a good niche to be in. So let's kind of jump into, you've had an agency yeah. you were telling me, tell me about that journey and, uh, tell me what happened. Yeah, well, I had an agency. I was feeling emotional about our conversation early because I had great years as, and, and you owned an agency. I had great years within an agency. Um, I think we accomplished a lot. It was, I, I was able to grow it globally. I had people working with the company in Asia and in, and in the U.S., but um, I was felt a little bit of anxiety there about how difficult, when we were talking earlier about how difficult it was to scale an agency. I mean, you know, really it's about people and being paid a reasonable amount of money for expertise that you're providing to other companies. And uh, it's a really challenging business. So I, um, I enjoyed it a lot, but I don't necessarily miss it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a tough business. Let's kind of talk about, I'm getting hit left and right, and I'm not even a big brand by agencies or people trying to sell me every single service imaginable. I'm sure you're probably getting this as well. What are ones that have stood out for you on the good side? And what are the yeah. ones that you're like, don't ever do this. This will never work. Well, for, first off, I was a sales guy for 18 years before I started an agency, before I built my brand. So I have a lot of respect for I've the most respect for salespeople and business development people. So take, you know, everything that, that I'm going to say is like coming from a place of, of love and, and appreciation. You know, when I started in sales, we were given like a call sheet. You were supposed to call these companies. You had to get, you know, 30 calls a day or 50 calls a day, whatever it is. And you had to secure a certain number of appointments and on and on and on. And we were, we were, and this went on for years and years. This wasn't like, month one through six. This was, so I have a lot of appreciation for it. And I get, got hung up on, you know, thousands of times. And so to answer your question, I think like, just like anything else, you, you have to do your homework first and foremost. You have to have some idea who your audience is and what you're saying to them and why you're saying it. I, you know, I think a lot of people are used to setting up these email flows. Business development people are used to setting up email flows and just kind of letting them rip. They do try to customize a bit, but 
most people really don't spend the time and energy to really understand who, who the customer is. Those that, you know, do, a lot of people use kind of like a spray and pray approach within an organization. So they'll send me an email and they'll send it to multiple people within the email, uh, in, within the organization. I don't think that's very effective either. The worst thing to do actually is, you know, to send it to a bunch of people, because then if I send it if, if I do find it interesting and I send it on to the person responsible for it, they'll say, oh, you know, that Jason, he's been emailing me too. And at that point, we're both annoyed, you know? So I think, and then the other thing that's really annoying right off the top, you know, right off the bat is like when you email multiple people on the same email thread. So that's kind of like generally speaking, more specifically, the worst kind of emails, and I, I do appreciate, again, all these people out there really trying to hustle and make a dollar. But the worst emails out there are all the ones where they're making a, an incredible amount of erroneous assumptions about our business and what they can do for me. So it, they look like this, you know, we can lower your CAC by this. We can increase your AOV by this. We can improve your revenue from email like by this. We can generate 15% more of this. I mean, every single email I see like that I immediately trash them because nobody knows my business. Like until we have a conversation and they understand my business, no one can make any type of assumption about how much they can improve my business. I mean, it's a very ridiculous thing. And it just, it comes across being very disingenuous to me. It, there, there's a lack of transparency and honesty there. So I think like the, those things are, are killers right away. Then the other thing I'm seeing all the time I see it all. I, I called someone out for it this weekend. I should actually read the email because I was showing it to my wife. We were, I was, it was on Sunday. I was, and, and you know, and I, I, I patience for people that send emails over the weekends because I know they're trying to, you know, connect. But the email said, and I get this all the time, I've prepared something very special for you. <laughs> so Jason, I have something really special. I've already created it. I've created this video, this piece of art, this ink, this, this, this link, these email flows. I want to share them with you. But all I need you to do is respond to me that you want me to share them with you. I find that that's also, first off, I'll tell you what I did about it. But the issue that I have is it feels very disingenuous, right? I mean, if you've really created something for me, you don't need my permission to send it. Like if you really did it and you send it to me and I try very, very, very hard to read all my emails and I see it and I say, holy shit, this person like really like took some time here to think about my business. Maybe they were right, maybe they were wrong. But I will at least respond to them and say X, Y, Z. So what people do, unfortunately, is they say, I prepared this for you, I'm gonna send it. I just need your permission to send it. What happens then is I call them out on it. So I, you know, it was Sunday and I'm like, well, this guy's, you know, trying to get me on Sunday. So I'm gonna respond to him and, I'm gonna, and here's my message. Please send it to me. You have 30 minutes to send it. And that, that's exactly what I did. I, I said, you have 30 minutes to send it. An hour went by, he didn't send it. And um, I sent him a, a note an hour later. And I said, and I just sent him a note back. I reply, replied to my email. I said, sorry, just that word, one, one word, sorry. And he responded back like an hour later, like, you know, ha, 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 emoji, emoji, emoji. You got me on that. He's like, yeah, I want to be transparent. We don't prepare him before we send it out. Et cetera, et cetera. And I appreciated that. But that's like the end of the conversation. So I think like, you know, do your homework, be honest. Don't try to send a fallacious amount of information about what you're going to do for me when you have no idea. And don't say you prepared something and tell me I, you need my permission to send it. So I think like all those things. So I'll pause there and I'll make some comments about what I think you should do. I get those all the time too. And I need to respond like that. Like you got 10 minutes or, or whatever, because they're not going to do it. And it's so disconnected. Like you were saying, you know, we have um, just this week uh, for our agency mastery, we get a member always goes over a strategy that they're crushing it on. And so one of the things that they do is they believe in kind of 10 touches. And one of the touches was, Hey, I got to research the heck out of this person. And what she found was this person that she wanted to contact on her like 100 hit list, love tennis. So she basically sent her an email going, I have two US Open tennis tickets for you. I would love to, you know, if we can chat, I would love to take you to the US Open. Yeah, she responded, I mean, that's a th 
right? Like that's doing the research. That's something like, holy cow, right? Like, yeah, I think that's fantastic. I think like, so that's an awesome, and maybe someone's going to take you up on that, right? I think if, you know, you certainly could have a captivated audience. I think it would be kind of strange, maybe, you know, 15 or 20 years ago, I might've done something like that. I think it would be kind of strange for me in my career to like, say, yeah, I'm going to not do something with my family this weekend to go, you know, with some stranger to the US Open. But I think like, to your point, I think like trying to communicate in as few words as possible about exactly why you're reaching out is like the thing to do, like really precise, like as few words as possible, really precise about why you're reaching out, what problem you solve and how you're uniquely capable of solving it. That's all you need to do. And if we have that problem and we can't solve it and we need help solving it, I'm going to respond to you. But you can't create a demand for something. Like we have the best like widget that anybody has ever seen. And it, it like will help you solve all your nightmares in your operations you can't create a demand and say you've, you know, for something that I don't think is a priority or is a problem in my business. So, and by the way, please don't be emotional about people's responses and don't take it personally. It's not a, it's not about your ego. You know, it's just like, do we need that service or not? And, and that's as simple as it is. I'm glad you mentioned short and concise because you know, what I do when I'm standing online, right? Or like in traffic, like I'm at a stoplight, I'll check my email really quick. Well, not at traffic, if my kids are listening. <laughs> right? Busted. I'm, I'm in line. <laughs> Chase, don't listen. But um, I'm in line just kind of, you know, scrolling through email. If yeah. I see a really long email, oh my God, I'm like, boom, delete. It's, yeah, there's no I, way. I just don't have the time in order to like, I know it's a sales pitch versus Jason, I like what you're doing, helping agency owners. I'd love to chat with you. I have an idea for you or, or here's the idea I have for you. Like, give me the idea. And if I like it, I'll be like, Ooh, there's more ideas here. Yeah. I mean, no one's going to steal your idea. It's not like if you give me an idea and I think it's really good, then I'm going to turn around and go like, hey, this asshole just gave me this idea for free. You know, let's go build uh, the Empire State Building. It doesn't work that way. If you have a really good idea and you share it with the client and they think that it's a really good idea, you know, okay, there's probably some assholes out there that will like try to steal. It doesn't work that way. Like people are going to say, hey, this is a good thought. Let's, like, let's, let's call this guy and, or this woman and, and, and this professional and talk to them about it. What are some, maybe two or, or one really good one that got you to respond yeah. that you actually engaged with? Yeah. Again, being really concise and to the point and making a suggestion, you know, and, and providing that, uh, that clear suggestion. I think those are interesting in like, not asking any more than one question, but if you do ask like a one, like if you say, here's the problem that we're solving, here's how we solve it. And then asking one very simple question. So if I am interested, I'm probably going to like respond to, to that question. And I think that's very, I think that's very legitimate. I think it's a great way to have a conversation, but it can't be too specific a question. Like what problems are you having reaching your goals in Q3? I mean, I'm never going to respond to an answer to a question like yeah. that. I mean, I understand someone wants to engage, but you know, it has to be like very specifically, here's a problem. Here's a solution. Do you need this, this, or this? Actually, what I think another is an excellent question that everybody should ask in their first email. Other than yourself, who else is responsible for this? Actually, they could just finish with that specific line. Other than yourself, because they don't want to, you don't want to insult the person you're sending it to. Mm -hmm. Who else is responsible for making this decision? Or who else like is responsible that. for this? That's fantastic because, you know, I'm not going to give a name to somebody. They, they found my name, right? I'm not going to say, go talk to, you know, our director of email or our, our, our CE manager, our CS manager. I'm not going to say that because then, you know, then they're going to turn around and say, Hey, Kelly just told me, Hey, Kristen, Kelly just told me to reach out to you. Like that is a misuse of, you know, what was just transpired there. But I might say, Hey, 
The other person that's responsible for this is, you know, so forth and so on. You can try to reach out to them. So something like that, I think is really, because most of the time it's like, I don't even make that decision. So why do I even want to engage in the conversation? Yeah. What about, you know, like I mentioned, one of our members going over kind of there's 10 touches, right? Mm -hmm. Before people Mm -hmm. really kind of engage. So what are good follow-up strategies? And I'll tell you the best follow-up strategy I saw that got my interest so I've yeah. been ignoring this one person that's just been trying to sell me forever, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and like, they'll do the typical bullshit thing of like, hey, I'm just bumping this up. Did you see this? Oh, the I'm bump like, up. Oh I, my I, God. I was talking to my wife this weekend about the bump up. I think it's hilarious, the bump up. Yeah. I have I, names for all of these things, by the yeah, way. Yeah, the, the, the bump up email needs to fucking die. That, that's all I need yeah, to say. That's so bad. I, I just want to tell you, like, if you're setting up an email flow and you've got the bump up, just take the time to restate why you're resending the email, right? Like just spell it out. Like, hey, Jason, I sent you this email two weeks ago. It was about how we think we can help you build a bigger house and do it in a more time saving way. Here's an example of, of what we think it would look like. Tell me if you're interested, if there's anybody else that I should speak to at your company. So, so something like that. Like, don't just say I'm bumping up this email because then I have to like try to yes. put a lot more energy and go through all these email threads that I didn't want to read in the first place to try to understand what it was that was being communicated to me three weeks ago. I get five or six bump up emails every day and they never <laughs> the include up. the original email. So I have no idea what the hell they're bumping up. One of the things that I put on my automation to follow up with people, and this works yeah. really well, I basically just do a forward and then I put the same subject line. And then I said, hey, Kelly, I just want to make sure you saw this. I know you probably get a thousand emails. Here's the email below. And then I just copy the same email. So it's, it's there. That's better. They can look at it at least. But the best follow-up email I ever got was this one guy. He literally, I'll take off my hat for this. And for the people just <laughs> listening on the audio, he basically like, he had his hair all messed up, kind of like mine. So if you guys are just yeah. listening to the audio version, you'll see it. And he basically had a picture of himself going like this. He's like, that's <laughs> how I feel when you ignore me, Jason. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yes. And I actually that's did good. respond. I was like, that's pretty funny, but I'm still not buying from you. <laughs> yeah. I, I've gotten all of them. You know, I get pictures of people. There's this one person that keeps on sending me pictures of animals. And I, I I've like have no idea what the connection is. I don't even know what they're selling. But the last thing I'll say on this subject, because it, it is kind of fun, is the worst thing you can do, the very, 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 very worst thing to do is to like have an email flow with an, in, like the final thing is an insult. That's like the worst. I will trash that and block like what? those fucking like, emails. I've never... Here, here, here's a perfect one. And this is a simple one, but you know, you know, be mindful of what you're saying and how it's going to be perceived. I guess you had no desire oh, yes. to, to scale your business this quarter. So I'm just going to say, thanks very much, but I'm moving on. Yeah, that's a bad close the loop. That's a very bad close the loop. Yeah, that's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah, I have no interest in scaling my business. Or I guess you had no interest in saving money. So I'm just going to leave it here. You know, goodbye. What's a good close loop for you that that would work? Time's not right. The timing is not right. If the time was right and we were interested in what it is that you're doing to solve a problem that we have, we will contact you. So I, the best thing to do is say, I'm going to try back in, you know, obviously the time isn't right. We still think we've got a great solution for you. I'm going to reach back out in October, you know, yep. something like that. What are your thoughts on video messages that are customized to you? Do you watch them? How short do they need to be? I've always been a big fan of if I can personalize it to you. So I'd be like, for example, t- you tell me if, if this would get your attention, be like, Hey Kelly, I just used your, your product and like literally showing you the product and say, right. I really like what this did. I'm a marketing agency. I would really like, you know, this has really cleared up my complexion. It's given me more confidence. I would love to help you market it to more people like me. Let me know if I can help. Damn straight. I will engage with you. Actually, I, I, I didn't think of that. A lot of people say I'm fans of your product. 
And I think that's great. And I think that's nice. I'm I think much they're more BSing likely. too, right? <laughs> well, you know what? Tr- truthfully, what's better is for people to say, I bought your product. Like I bought your product and I've tried it. And here's a picture of like the box and everything else. And I've got some ideas on how to improve the inbox experience. That's really powerful. And truly, like, I, I don't really have time to do it anymore, but I, I do like look up that stuff. Like I, I'll look up, I'll be like, Jason, you know, from, you know, yeah, he's, he's a customer, you know, he's bought three boxes. I will absolutely call them out on that and see if they've looked at it. So I do look at a lot of videos that are sent. I play them at like double the speed and I'll drop off. It's just like anything else in direct marketing. I'll drop off immediately because what they'll typically do is they'll like, it's always usually around, they'll like put my website behind them and they'll like, you know, scroll up and down my website and say like, you know, we do this and that, and your website looks like this and that. I'm like, yeah, you, you know, I know what my website looks like. And you're just putting your sales pitch on top of my website. You just wasted my time. So yeah, I think what you described, Jason, though, about like really customizing that, that, that is the attention of detail that I think, you know, we're talking about that really does move the needle. And when someone goes that deep to buy your product and to like try your product and say that they've got an idea for you. I mean, that's pretty powerful. What about with direct mail? Yeah. Cause I want to go, what's got your attention in direct mail? Cause yeah. we've already gone kind of through the negative things. I think people know what not to do. And then I want to yeah. go to what's got your attention in the first couple seconds on a phone call. If that's still good. Yeah. I mean, phone calls are really bad now too. I do occasionally, you know, pick up the phone. I'd say like once a week, um, I answer calls, same exact situation, like getting to the point, like immediately, like instantly getting to the point, I think is a big deal. So yeah. And I, I like this in phone calls, it's the same thing. Someone will call and then they'll start like asking all these questions and like, you know, I heard you're this and that, do you need this and that? I'm like, dude, can you just tell me like what it is you're calling about? Like, what are you calling me for? Like, yeah, don't how, pretend well, actually, you're a friend what, of mine yet. Yeah, actually, what I say all the time, like every single time, you know, uh, the first thing I'll say is like, you know, hello, Jason, nice to meet you. How can I help you? Like, that's the first thing I say is like, how can I help you? Like, what is it that you can, what, what is it ca- I can do for you? What are you calling me about? And, and, you know, I just hope they get a really succinct, quick answer, you know, and then it's either like yes or no, same deal. What about with direct mail? What's got your attention? In the, in the mail or has anybody ever got your attention for sending you something? I've gotten direct mail from a lot of like money people, like VCs, they'll send me something like, Hey, we're, you know, we're this firm and we specialize in this and we specialize in that. I've gotten all the, the, the whole thing, like the pieces that you open up and it plays a song and, and everything else. I think just actually just sending me a letter would be great. I mean, written? I'll probably Hand start written? Getting, handwritten or type letter. But like handwritten, yeah, I mean, that would be phenomenal. I'm, hopefully people are listening to your podcast. We'll know because yeah. um, I'll start getting some letters. I, that's a phenomenal idea. Like I will take the time. You know, I'm a reader. People from our generation like read books and stuff all the time, like tactically. Um, I remember reading the newspaper on the way to work. So I think like if someone sent me a letter, you know, I, I would open it up and read it, you know, for sure. One of the things we were talking about yesterday, Sonia was saying when she sends out a letter, her letters are wax stamped, oh which God. I really like, but I would take it up a notch. I would do a handwritten note and I would find an old Polaroid photo so I could take a picture in front of your product and put the note with the rubber stamp. I'd be like, you're giving me all that's your next level. Marketing. <laughs> yeah, that's next level. Yeah. I mean, that would be better than like tickets to Wimbledon, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I'd be like, wow, this person's like really, truly is interested in our business. I was watching a video the other day and it's all about experiences. Like how can you create those experiences? Uh, One guy, I can't remember who it was, but he was a waiter at the time at this fancy restaurant in New York. And these people he was waiting on, he literally, um, they were wanting to tour around the U.S. They were from Australia and have all this American authentic food. And right. so they're at this fancy restaurant that charges like $300 steaks, right? We can all picture that kind of place, like kind of stuffy, 
kind of a place I probably bougie. avoid, right? Yeah, very bougie. Yeah. And they were mentioning just as he was kind of cleaning up, they were like, you know, the one thing they were going back tomorrow. And um, they were like, man, the one thing I really wish I had was like a, a street hot dog. Right. This waiter went across the street, bought the whole table hot dogs, brought them back and said, hey, I know you guys probably – you don't think I, I heard you. You want an American hot dog. Here you go. It blew them away. Yeah, that's crazy. There is a book. It's called The Culture Code. Actually, one of the best business books I've read probably in the last five years, The Culture Code. And it, it talks about building culture within your organization. And so that there's a restauranteur in New York. He's the guy that's founded Gramercy Park. And um, all these big restaurants, uh, Shake Shack, which is billion. He's, a, he's, he's got a couple billion dollars worth of restaurants at Empire. And he talks all about that. He, he, there's, a, there's about a chapter on him and he talks about creating culture. And this culture in his restaurants are all about like really tuning in to what their customers want and say. And there's those type of examples you just gave about how they, that they will do that. They will do really kind of anything to make it memorable. So up to the point where they'll, they'll put notes like, you know, on the plate, you know, like I heard you had a bad day or I hope the soup, soup makes you, the lobster bisque makes you feel better or something. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Well, this has all been amazing, Kelly. I always like kind of talking about the the crazy things people do and, and how, yeah. how we all can fix them. Because a lot of times, look, you know, like you were saying, the agency is tough. Sales is tough. You know, how Brutal. can we get the attention? And we're trying to reach as much people as possible to really help them out. Because I, I truly do believe that everyone reaching out believes that they can help everyone. But yep. their their mechanism or their kind of approach is not always the right. So I appreciate you, you, you sharing this. Is there anything else that we didn't cover that you think would benefit the listeners listening in to give them some ideas? I, you know, be patient, you know, be, be patient. It's a long game. It, it is not, you know, we, I think, you know, society we're, we're like hypersensitized to have things want to have like an instant response. You know, I'm going to text somebody. They're going to text me back. I'm going to DM them. They're going to DM me back on the subject that we're talking about. And anything else in business and in life, in my opinion, like be patient just because you struck out on your first attempt to reach Jason or I doesn't mean that we're not interested. It doesn't mean that we won't engage with you. It just means now's not the time. So, yeah, I mean, be, be patient with your audience and know who you're talking to and try not to insult them. Realize it's just it's just about business. We're just here trying to do what's best for our customers and our and, you know, people within the organization. So be patient with us. Last question. So be patient is amazing. What's the gap between each reach out that you would recommend? Like in the neighborhood of three times a year, like two to three times a year. And it's kind of ridiculous to think sending six emails, you're just going to wear, it's going to be like the game of attrition. Mm -hmm. Like if you keep on sending, you know, this is what you're talking about earlier, it's, it's not going to change things. You're not going to wear us down. We're not going to like say, oh, you know, I didn't think that I needed that help, you know, six emails ago. But now that you've sent your seventh email, I think you're right. I, I do need that. It just, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Like, you know, two or three emails, if we don't respond, just accept the fact that it's just something we don't need right now and hit us back in a few months, three months, four months. Yeah. And, Hope you had a good summer. Maybe you have time to talk to me about how I can help you. Yeah. And I would also include the original emails. So then we could see, like, I remember I always wanted to interview Seth Godin. And the first time I reached out to Seth Godin, he basically told, and he was, and he responded, it was him. And he goes, I'm really busy right now. Hit me up in eight months. Yep. So I put a task, eight months. I forwarded the same email. I said, Hey, Seth, you told me to reach out in eight months. You've been my dream guest to come on the show. Love to have you on. He goes, Cool. Here's my calendar. Yeah, it's phenomenal. There you go. That, that is awesome. That is an awesome example of being successful. And you didn't do it at six months. You know, you waited until eight months and you sent him a note. Because you do it at six months, you're like, dude, I told you eight months. Fuck yep. you. Yeah. You know, I mean, like eight months, like great. Be patient, so, follow um, instructions and be helpful. Like, 
And Love I even it. said, like, I want to introduce you even more to my audience. And he was like, at the time, your podcast, like, very small, you know, because this was many years ago. And he was like, hey, if this guy did it, and I'm the same way. Like, if people reach out to me, I'd be like, hey, hit me up at this time. If they hit yeah. me up earlier, I ignore them. But if they hit me up, you know, at the same time I told them and they reminded me about it, I'd be like, cool, all right, I'll do it. You know, on this subject, I will tell you, our business, my business, T. Shanley, would not be, it probably wouldn't be in existence today had not the same, had we not had the same experience. I reached out to, actually, my partner, Rob, business partner, Rob, reached out to our third business partner, Aaron, our current third business partner, Aaron, and he reached out via phone call and um, we needed him to help him. We wanted him to help us promote the business on his YouTube channel. And, you know, it took a while, but Rob did get in touch with Aaron. And um, it just so happened that Aaron was so engaged in this category because he's, he's very big into male fitness and like male grooming. He's so into this category. He was really thinking a lot about being in the skincare business. And that's how our partnership formed is that Aaron really was willing to speak about what it means to be a man and take care of his skin and take care of himself and create healthy routines. And he really wanted to, to go into the skincare business. It was that right call at the right time, being patient and getting through that actually created T. Shanley. We wouldn't be in existence had that not played out the way it was. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. So you just got to right. pay attention and look for the signs uh, yeah. you know, all around. So, well, this has been amazing, Kelly. Thanks so much for coming on the show. And uh, you guys, uh, don't blast him with all kinds of stupid stuff, please. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the ideas that we gave you. I think he'll be like, oh, here's an envelope with the stamp oh, on it right. and the Polaroid. So, but, Bring him, uh, baby. Love to see it. But uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. And, and guys, if, if you guys enjoyed this, we put out a bunch of masterclasses to help you guys out. We have one for, if you want to attract the perfect clients, we have a masterclass for free. Just go to agencymastery360.com slash attract. And if you want to know how to convert them, charge the right amount of price, just do slash convert. And totally free. We give away all our resources for free. So go check it out. We just want to help you out and grow your agency faster. And until next time, have a swank day. The guarantee. Um, I've got a whole bunch of them. We'll guarantee you these results. I don't know what people are thinking. They don't think. That's it's, <laughs> it's just it's like, I want to just throw this shit against the wall and see if this guy's going to believe me. I know. And you think that is going to incentivize me, like insulting me like that is going to incentivize me to call you back and say, yeah, you're right. I really need, I really need your help. My LinkedIn title is not CEO. It's saying helping agency owners scale faster. So whenever I get a message on LinkedIn, it says, hey, I love what you're doing at helping agency members grow faster, right? Like I know it's right. like a, a variable program. <laughs> right. And I'm like, yeah. hey, I just want to let you know, most people don't have this and then they'll get offended. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm not going to help. <laughs> yeah. And here's how I pissed off that guy. He was in Massachusetts and he went on and on to tell me how great he is and everything else, which is fine. Like, I don't fucking care. There is... The quick question is like one of the six, the quick question. The, and they put it in the subject line, the quick question. And we have a huge office with like, and it's all open, like all our marketing people, my desk is over there in, my, in, in the office, all the marketing people, is like 20 people over there. And we're all laughing because everybody gets the quick question. So um, Grace, who runs paid social, she looked up and there's this whole article about how her subject line is no longer like the de facto subject line to get people's attention. So, cause like, I just delete them all. Like the, the, the quick question subject line, I just delete. Like, I don't even look at those emails. Like they're just right to the shit can. So I was sending people the link. So everybody that sent me a quick question, I just respond back with the link. Quick question, respond with the link. Quick question, respond with the link. And that pissed that guy off. He was just like, going on and on and I just start ripping on me. And then I responded back like, this is coming from a place of love. And then he said, fuck you. And by the way, your Instagram's all fake. Fuck you. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like dude, you have some serious, you have some serious anger issues, man. 